Howdy doody buckaroonies. One of my favorite plugins out there is the Reason Rack VST and in today's video I wanted to show you 11 sound design tips in the Reason 11 Rack VST in about 11 minutes. Be sure to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up below if you enjoyed it and let's get right to it. Kong includes some cool physical modeling tools for making your own drum sounds. So here in the drum module I've got the physical bass drum and I've loaded it up and applied some tweaks and it sounds like this. I've also added the rattler just for a bit of air and the compressor for some snap. This by itself is pretty awesome, but for some added weight, I've used a synthetic layer with Europa. I'm just using a sine wave with a pitch envelope, and that brings it up to this. With some added heat from a pulverizer here, we've got some nice solid kick drums that aren't your just boring generic synth drums in a matter of minutes. One idea that I think is a little overlooked is not only using Kong as a drum sampler, but also as a vocal trap sampler. This is great for that kind of like MPC style workflow. This does take a little bit of setup, so after I loaded in my slices, I went to the amp envelope section, dropped the decay to zero and set the mode to gate. Then I went to the pad group with the quick mode and muted them all with A. That way this turns it into a monophonic vocal slice playback machine. To finish these off here, I added Neptune to tune them up, Echo for some nice saturated delay and an RV7000 for some nice reverb. And we've got some pretty convincing vocal chops. I'm a really big fan of noise and texture in my music and in my sounds and in my mixes. And one of the cool things within Thor is the noise oscillator here. What I've set up is essentially custom vinyl crackle. I used three different noise oscillators, one on the static and I adjusted the density, one on the color and just kind of balanced that to find some nice kind of lo-fi mechanical noise. And finally sample and hold and just adjusted the rate to taste. I've run that through a shaper here and I set the amplitude envelope just to be fully sustained. That way I can just hold it down and sample out some vinyl crackle to get the tone right, I added a pulverizer, I used some EQ, and then I went in with the RV7000 and used the Space Echo 1, which takes some basic noise and turns it into some pretty convincing vinyl crackle. Another really fun tool is the NNXT sampler. This is not only good for the default presets in it, but also good for just layering and manipulating sounds. Here I layered up a kick drum and the sound of some magnets. I went in and adjusted the amp envelope of each of these, the filter on each layer and the pitch. I added a Scream 4, a pulverizer and an RV7000 with the spring reverb. And I turned a kick drum and some magnets into a pretty cool kind of lo-fi clunky rim shot. This is a lot of fun to experiment with if you turn off the high quality mode as well. And you can get some kind of gritty textures out of things, especially as you get more into extreme pitch manipulation. The quartet chorus ensemble is probably one of my favorite chorus effects. It just sounds really good. But one of the cool tricks I use quite a bit is this grain mode here. By adjusting the jitter density and size and then just upping the width to taste and blending in the dry wet, you can take a dry percussion sound and add that kind of loose pre-shifted feel to it and also enhance the stereo image of it. Without the quartet and the reverb enabled here, we have just kind of a dry, snappy snare sound. Once we bring this quartet in though, you'll hear we get a bit more stereo width and a bit of a loose, sloppy feel to it. And then we can just feed that into a reverb to kind of tie it all together. Usually a really short reverb works best. And we've got a nice wide snare sound from a very dry static sound. Europa is one of the coolest synths in Reason and probably one of the coolest synths out there. And it's really easy to resample the sound of Europa into itself to make custom wavetables. To do this easily, we'll right click on Europa and we'll hit combine here. This will bring it into a combinator. We can open up the programmer and just assign a few things. So let's say we want to create a wavetable from this basic patch. We're not even going to touch anything. Let's go in and enable modifier one and then in our programmer here, we'll click on Europa. We'll set rotary one to target the engine one. We'll do the mod one amount and then we'll go in and maybe do the shape as well. So we'll go into engine one shape and then adjust the percentage to be maybe something about like this. Since we've got these both tied to rotary one, we'll just automate this in our DAW to go from zero to 100%. We'll do this over the course of one bar and we'll use a very low note just to make sure we get detail in the wavetable. In my case, I pretty much always use the note C0. Once you've created your wavetable, you can just drag it into Europa and then change the wave to the user wave or user wave smooth. It might depend on the wavetable. I find usually smooth works best. And as you can see, we've now dragged in 
our custom wavetable we made with Europa. One of my favorite techniques for designing percussion is actually to use the B512 vocoder in combination with the merger and splitter. If we take a look around the back of the rack here, what I've done is send the left signal into the merger and splitter and run the left signal to both the carrier left and right inputs. Then I ran the right output into the modulator input. This means that the sound is vocoding itself. This is really cool because it gets you some interesting kind of squidgy characters. Here I've got a water foley snare that I made, which sounds pretty traditional, but if we turn this on and run it through the vocoder on 32 band mode, I've adjusted the formants, the high frequency emphasis, and the decay, we can get some really unique timbres of almost like a hi-hat sound. We could adjust the band count. We could even adjust the frequency level of these bands to get something even more different and weird. It's a really great trick to make percussion just sound more interesting. One really great way to create some epic sounding pads and textures is to utilize the players. I've got a quad note generator here on C minor pentatonic that's running into a dual arpeggio with the backbone FP preset. I've got that feeding this Europa here, which is a pluck preset. I just changed the octaves and then two maelstroms just to add a pad behind that. If I hold out two C's here an octave apart, this is what our starting sound is. which is pretty good to begin with. But what we're gonna do is let that run for a bar or two and then resample it into a grain. Once you've got your sound dragged into a grain here, you can just alter this however you like. I've slowed it down, added some jitter, increased the panning spread. I added the phaser here and then fed that into the film score IR of the RV7000 and added an EQ just to filter it out to cut out the lows and the highs. And we've turned what was a pretty cool pad already into a very epic cinematic droning granular texture. As you may or may not know, RV7000 is a convolution reverb. I've got the default Kong kit here feeding into the plate reverb. But what's cool about this is we can drag in any other sound to be an impulse response. This is one of my favorite sound design techniques to just get some really wacky, interesting sounds out of stuff that's maybe a bit more traditional. Here, I've got the sound of me snapping my fingers, which takes our snare and turns it into almost a snapping percussion sound. Here, I've loaded in the sound of me kicking some logs which turns our snare into kind of a watery kick drum. As one last example here, I've taken the sound of me rattling some coins in my hand and loaded that in, blended it into taste, and that takes our acoustic snare drum and adds kind of a cool metallic texture to it. Another cool idea is using Neptune to control the formants of any sound, and this is not just for vocals. So I've got a percussion loop loaded up here. We can turn the MIDI to the voice synth and disable that by dropping the voice synth level down to zero. We'll turn off transpose and pitch adjust, enable the formants, and then play with this. This is a really great way to manipulate a sound in an interesting fashion to get a different character and timbre out of it. You can almost make things a bit more lo-fi or make them a bit more bright, which is a cool way to transform some loops and other sounds that you've maybe used a bunch or just make something a bit more unique. One last tip is don't forget about Combinator. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Reason, this might seem super obvious, but for those of you that are newer or maybe just got into the Reason Rack VST, the Combinator is one of the most powerful things out there. Within this, I've got two LFOs, a dual arpeggio, a friction, and an echo. But what's cool is I can actually control just about any parameter. So I've actually used these LFOs to control the different rotary dials on this front panel here. Within the programmer, I've then assigned these to a bunch of different things. So I've got this going to the bow and pluck key, the harmonics key, and the octave transpose, meaning I can just hold out a chord and this patch will essentially play itself. Combinator is extremely powerful and a lot of fun because it opens up just about any different control and any parameter of anything that you want to mess with. So definitely don't sleep on that and don't forget it's there. If there's ever a parameter you wish you could modulate or tweak or something, the Combinator is your way to go. And there you have it, 11 sound design tips in Reason 11 in about 11 minutes. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I hope you learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.